Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Andre Schaffnell. I'm the business manager for uh, Lord's Register Marine and Offshore here in Sweden. I was invited and uh, I cordially thank you for thanks. Sure. Um, having the opportunity to speak about uh, the Grey Boat Code, which is uh, which is, uh, is a means to uh, comply to safety in a military operator way. Uh, my background is uh, not from classification only. I'm, I'm also a lieutenant colonel from the Swedish Marines. Uh, I've been serving in marine battalions, so you might say I'm quite a seasoned uh, combat boat uh, operator uh, as well commanding battalions. Uh, having that said, uh, first a uh, quick confirmation question of mine to you guys in the audience. How many of you are not familiar with the, the difference between the statutory legislation and the classification rules? Fine, I spend a minute or two uh, on that one because it, it's important that uh, one understands the difference, at least in concept, because classification uh, societies and their rules, they are however uh, mandatory if you want to to receive your class certificate but at least it's like choose between car makings isn't it while uh, the statutory legislation that is that is mandatory that is law and you have to to uh, abide to those requirements it, it's like if you again uh, buy yourself a car you can choose from cars but eventually you will end up at the Svensk Bilprovning, the, the authority actually checking the car that it is safe. It only looks at it's safe. You see the difference? Class rules, basically best practice how to build a boat and maintain it. And safety is regulated by uh, the statutory legislation. Flag state. Okay? Fine. So, moving on. <coughs> Um, I'm speaking about this grey boat code. Uh, it's not new. Uh, it's uh, having a, a late revision. I, I just heard it's some month old in the latest revision. Not yet published. But historically, if we look, look back, the Ministry of Defence with the United Kingdom and the uh, Northern Ireland, the MOD, uh, they have developed and maintained its own standards. And they, they have used uh, different inspectors, surveyors, overseers, to make sure and uh, provide the level of assurance that they actually are, uh, are meeting their own standards. However, uh, with, with the reductions in resources and the technical expertise, they have made more use of commercial standards and harmonizing the practices to the civilian practices and realigning the approach to safety through the formation of naval authorities being the military equivalent to the statutory uh, authorities I just talked about, talk about. This scenario is by no means specific to the UK. It, it's quite common in, in many navies, such as in, in Sweden. Uh, together, we have developed this grey code, uh, and it's not only a Lloyd's Register. We have done that uh, together with the UK Naval Authority Group, the Ministry of Defence in the CSS Boats Group, the Platform Duty Holders, operational units, and uh, again, uh, Lloyd's Register Naval Expertise Center in Bristol. Of course, exem exempt from statutory regulation, the MOD is naturally driven by its own policy, which required levels of safety equivalent to commercial operators, or even better or if it, that's not obtainable, at least reduce the risk as low as reasonable practical. To address this, we started to work with the Grey Boat Code. It was uh, developed by our Naval Liaison Office as a process, an evolving process in the response to MOD's need to demonstrate the level of certification for the small boats to comply with their own safety policy. First used in 2005, it, it, it's meant to, uh, to be in response of the specific uh, operational needs of the military operators, in, and it's now been successfully incorporated with the UK MOD as part of their safety management system. 
it's a process-based approach, as I mentioned. It uses appropriate and relevant requirements from different applicable standards and rules. And on top of that, you put the additional owner's requirements and, which have been quite successful, you use one single working sur survey document to do that once you have tailored it. So the intended purpose of the Grable Code is to assist the military uh, in improving safety at, of life at sea and protecting the environment without unreasonably restricting their operational capabilities. We have been challenged from time to time saying, oh, if that's so important with safety for also these small boats under 24 meters of length, why don't we go all statutory with the civilian codes. And if they don't provide the evidence that they are fulfilling uh, all requirements from a statutory code for commercial shipping, they shouldn't have a certificate at all. But we would say that uh, these, this point of view actually uh, fail to recognize the underlying issues being a military uh, operator in, uh, in worst case harm's way. It is possible to stand firmly by the statutory codes, insist on everything should be uh, to, to uh, be in full compliance, but that would actually create a new set of risks. If you consider yourself uh, a rigid inflatable boat in use for patrolling, say, a naval base, you will reckon that this unit is surely black or gray in color. It may have navigation lights, but would it be on? Would they be fitted? Would they have a radar reflectors? Would they have radar? Are they operating the radar? Would they have high-vis uh, equipment? Or would they wear black and gray or green? Would they, be try would they try to be stealthy? I think you know the answer to that. So operating a boat on, under these conditions has risks, risks and the commercial standards they have not taken that kind of operation into thought. You can use the very same uh, rib boat uh, in, a, in another operational setup, say for the special forces or for the, for the police, and you will have different operational patterns. We've been doing this uh, in, in 12 years, applying this tailoring approach across a wide range of craft types in a variety of roles. Uh, we've been uh, the de uh, delegated authority to the UK Naval Authority for nine years now, uh, and we have developed the Grey Boat Code uh, during that time. It's now being considered a mature and proven model. I it's a tailored solution to provide a level of safety certification rather than classification, I spoke of in, 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 in the opening, to the individual boats to meet the needs of the duty holders responsible for managing the safe operations and the use of small boats. The Grey Boat Code process is the process we followed to take uh, appropriate, relevant standards and combine them into one single, the survey record. This was then tailored when necessary by use of mitigations of, or equivalents to meet the, the needs of the naval operations. And that process brought us to, to uh, the, the where we are now, the, the formalized and almost published Grey Boat Code. It's also uh, led to uh, a series of boat class templates while doing so, combining the requirements from relevant appro appropriate standards and um, on top of that, the, the owner's requirements. And we have been applying this approach to some 500 cadet training boats and almost as much uh, different multi-roll boats such as ribs uh, used from the Royal Navy for sea boats, um, interception uh, and other uh, operations. We have issued certificates to over 1,000 boats, and uh, the resulting documentation is forwarded then to the Naval Authority, which actually uh, then will issue the Naval safe Safety Certificate to that boat. 
And to wrap up, this uh, 23 chapter uh, gray code, of gray boat code of ours, uh, they, they, they do contain um, the, the most, uh, the common ones that you are familiar with. It's structure, stability, fire, escape, and all of these things you are, are well aware of. But th there's also two soft chapters about uh, accommodation, if you are away more than 24 hours. Uh, and there's also a chapter about uh, the, the work uh, safety for the, for the operators. And I'm happy to, to show you uh, after afterwards. So, the initial process when approaching the MOD is to discuss the concept of operations for all of their ships and boats. If you come down to, to uh, boats, this code would be, could be uh, applicable. And the key activity in the gray boat code process is considering the boat's specific operational role and agree on any deviations within the operational envelope and put these into the typical boat template. Most UK mod uh, small boats are now being certified under this single code. And uh, the key benefits are, uh, as mentioned, one survey document, but it also reduces complexity and confusion to the naval authority, the platform authorities, and the operational users by bringing consistency and simplicity in the safety standards, procedures, and administration. Thank you. I'm between you and your coffee, so yeah, are there any questions? Cl clear as mud. No, there. It, it would. Um, the, the question was if it's included calculations, uh, algorithms, and, and, and calcula calculation models for boats within the code. And I, I would say, um, I, I would like to check, but, but the, the principle is that the, the code itself will draw its, its uh, requirements from other, from other um, statutory requirements or class rules or what have you. That's most, most appropriate. 